In this screencast, we discuss the simulation model for insulin glucose dynamics that we use in studies for both closed loop and um, for open loop control, otherwise known as sensor augmented pump therapy. So after viewing this screencast, you should be able to understand what type of model is used in these studies, what equation is added to the original model, how is a steady state solution obtained, what type of controller is implemented in this simulation model, and you'll understand the implementation in Simulink. Our model is based on two publications that I'm showing in the lower right-hand side by Roman Havorka and co-workers at Cambridge University. And the basic idea is that it uses a compartment to represent the dynamics of several components in the system. So you can see that I'm showing insulin infusion, and basically there's four different compartments or ordinary dif differential equations that describe the dynamics between a subcutaneous infusion injection and the plasma insulin values. We also see the gut absorption of carbohydrates from a meal coming in. And so there's two compartments associated with blood glucose. And then there's three compartments associated with insulin action. That is, after the insulin goes through these compartments, then there is an effect of the insulin on the blood glucose uptake and therefore the concentration. So the original model has uh, nine compartments or nine states, therefore nine ordinary differential equations. Also, we have second order meal dynamics shown here, so that adds a couple of other compartments. Um, and then in addition, since a continuous glucose monitor is not directly measuring the blood glucose, it's uh, measuring the interstitial fluid glucose, there's a dynamic lag between the blood glucose and the interstitial fluid glucose. So that re is represented by one more state or differential equation. We encode these in a MATLAB S function and use them in a simulink model so we can add measurement noise and bias to the continuous glucose monitoring signal and also add quantization on the CGM in pump. So for example, some sensors may only read to the nearest one milligram per deciliter. So that's a quantization level. And similarly, there may be a small um, threshold level on how much you can change an in insulin pump. I'm not going to go into detail here, but just to show that the ordinary differential equations involved in this model have two states associated with the blood glucose or associated with insulin concentration, three associated with insulin action. Then we added an additional interstitial uh, glucose um, state, interstitial fluid glucose state. There's a large number of parameter values. Most of these are taken from the uh, publications of Roman Hovorka. But I should note in green, there are three parameters that we use that are based on insulin sensitivity and may change those to make an individual either more or less sensitive to insulin. And then um, one of the major parameters is the actual mass of um, the individual, and that's shown in red. This is the block diagram in Simulink. So I've embedded those differential equations inside this Simulink block that's encircled in red. There's also a discrete PID controller uh, that simulate. If you want to do open loop simulations, you simply set, set the proportional gain equal to zero for that uh, controller. If you give an insulin infusion related to the meal, then that's considered a um, manual infusion. So that's shown separately as this block. The meal carbohydrates are simulated as pulses at breakfast, lunch, dinner, and um, an evening snack. I'm showing then the outputs that are saved, which include the blood glucose level, but also includes the subcutaneous uh, interstitial fluid glucose concentration. And what I'm going to note here is that is actually measured by a sensor 
So there's a certain sample time of five minutes and there's measurement noise that gets added to that and possibly a measurement bias to represent a miscalibration. So then all those components are added in the quantization it may be quantized to uh, one milligram per deciliter, for example, and that can be simulated as well. We then um, also like to plot the insulin that's being delivered in terms of units per hour as the standard uh, units used. Then we take the integral of the insulin being delivered and the integral of the blood glucose concentration because we can use those to calculate the mean uh, values or, and, and also the, the total amount of insulin that's given over the course of the day. So again, the closed loop controller is a digital PIDY. The derivative is on the measured uh, glucose signal and not on the error. I show both the continuous representation as well as the discrete rep representation that's actually implemented. Again, we use a sample time of five minutes. To obtain the steady state solutions, we're given the parameter values, and if we're given an insulin delivery rate, we can find all the state values, including the blood glucose um, concentration. Now, in some cases, you may have a desired blood glucose concentration, and therefore you need to find the required insulin delivery rate. In both those cases, we use F-Solve and MATLAB to solve for the steady state values, and I show the two function files. Uh, below. In dynamic simulations, we want to understand the response to meals and the effect of using feed forward information versus feedback only. We can understand the effect of tuning, although I'm not going to show that in simulations um, in this screencast, the effect of CGM bias and noise, and then also performance metrics, which are discussed on the next slide. So, typical metrics that are used to understand how well an individual is controlling their blood glucose includes the time in range, and the range of 70 to 180 milligrams per deciliter is most desirable. The time in hypo or hyperglycemia, that is when you're outside the range of 70 uh, to 180, the mean blood glucose throughout the day, and the total daily dose of insulin. And what we do is we construct the following table where we show for each of these ranges, the 30 to 50 hypo range, 50 to 70, slightly hypo, the desirable 70 to 180, et cetera, et cetera, the amount of time, the percent of time that we spend in each of those ranges, as well as the mean bl blood glucose and um, the total daily dose. And so for this particular example that we've shown in a previous screencast for um, an open loop control problem, where an individual is just dialing in their basal rate of insulin and then giving themselves uh, insulin injections at mealtime. And we're showing the effect of a missed lunch bolus. So we have the first breakfast bolus um, at time zero hours. And so at time five hours, when lunch is served, the blue curve represents the individual that has missed the insulin bolus, whereas the green is the individual that gave an insulin bolus. And then the other boluses for dinner and the snack are given. So we're showing the effect of only missing one insulin bolus. And what you notice is then that you have very elevated blood glucose as shown in the blue curve, and that's reflected in the table where with the missed lunch bolus, there's only 45.3% of the time spent in the desirable range of 70 to 180 milligrams per deciliter compared to 775 when you give all the boluses. And also the mean blood glucose is quite a bit higher. It's 185.5 milligrams per deciliter, whereas it's 152.2 when you give the bolus at lunchtime. And so again, mean blood glucose is an indicator of long-term um, possible problems with an individual. So you'd like to have as low a mean blood glucose as possible. So to summarize, in this screencast, we presented a compartmental model for insulin glucose dynamics, which consisted of nine ODEs plus two for meal carbohydrates, 
and an additional lag, one ODE for the blood glucose to interstitial fluid lag. We discussed the Simulink implementation, a discrete PID controller with five minute sample time, and the possibility of simulating noise and bias on CGM.